Hi guys, another episode of Microtech Crossroads, or uh, just to put it simply, three guys with laptops, uh, maybe not always guys, but uh, well, a casual informal setting where we can take uh, Microtech experts, this time Druvis and Tuoms, and just casually discuss something that interests them, us, me, you. And uh, this time, today's big topic is everything wireless. And to be specific, the Wi-Fi Wave 2 software package. So, right off the bat, let me ask you, what is it? What does it contain? Firstly, it overhauls the whole underlying wireless interface management system. Secondly, it gives uh, the user a new menu for managing wireless interfaces and uh, this new menu replaces both the menu for managing wireless interfaces on a standalone access point as well as uh, managing a network of wireless access points, what we call being a Capsman controller. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, some builds of the package also include drivers for 802.11ax radios. Mm. Okay. Well, I guess sometimes you just have to um, throw out the old code and start anew. Uh, but what about the drivers? I always assumed that the packages are all the same. They're just compiled for different architectures. Is there more complexity to this? Well, it's, uh, you see, on, on uh, x86 virtual machine, uh, cloud house hosted router uh, does not need radio drivers to uh, control a network of APs to be a cap Capsman controller. The radio drivers are only needed on the devices on which the radios are physically on. And all of our 802.11ax uh, access points have the ARM CPU architecture. Mm -hmm. So the drivers are only included when the package is compiled for the ARM arch architecture. So, but if different scenarios have different needs, uh, why not make two different packages, like one with the utilities, another with the drivers? It's currently all one package to make package management simpler. We have considered, considered splitting them up mm -hmm. because uh, uh, the package also supports some 802.11ac Wave 2 chipsets, which is why it's called the Wi-Fi Wave 2 package. And uh, so you can install it on some of our uh, 802.11ac boards, such as the HAP AC Cubed. But there are uh, some boards, uh, like the HAP AC Squared, which don't support the package, uh, just because they don't have enough flash storage to install the package. And, and the HAP AC Squared is a very popular board and probably the most common piece of user feedback we've received about the Wi-Fi Wave 2 package is that users would like to be able to install it on the HAP AC squared and splitting the package up is one way which might, might enable us uh, to do that, to, to give the users this uh, uh, option. But there are downsides to doing that which we need to figure out ways to address beforehand. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, splitting the package does not sound like the right way forward for me. Um, as RouterOS right now is such a small, compact operating system, I would definitely root for letting it grow. But I also understand that uh, right now we have a lot of uh, 16 megabyte uh, storage chips out there. So the whole development has to revolve around uh, fitting the most basic features into that. But I'm happy that we're now starting to put in uh, larger flash chips. Um, I hope we are, the, the development for the 16 megabyte flash chips is not um, uh, sort of limiting our future uh, development. I would agree that we shouldn't risk overcomplicating the development for boards which require it just to provide a nice bonus uh, to owners of boards that work fine without the package. But our de developers are clever. They may figure out a way to do that without messing up their workflow. In which case, everyone wins. 
Yeah, if you go with my critique, you are also a winner. But uh, one thing I was thinking um, when you were discussing the limitations of um, of, uh, of these um, of these uh, sizes and everything is that, uh, in in a way, it seems that uh, because of the past limitations of the di different products, that router OS uh, coders and the whole team has this uh, discipline of making efficient software, right? Because nowadays you, you, you see it in so many companies and softwares and uh, and pieces of, uh, I don't know, for me personally, I see it in, in gaming a lot, but in all sorts of software that because the hardware is so powerful nowadays, nobody cares about efficient software. You can just throw, like throwing money at the problem, you can throw also computing power at the problem. So I really appreciate that you guys here, everyone at Microtech, are still being very uh, disciplined about uh, making efficient code. And uh, I believe that this will not change even with, uh, without these past limitations. So uh, uh, thank you for that, everyone at Microtech. Good, good words. Um, <laughs> when talking about the uh, Wi-Fi pack, Wi package, you mentioned the AC chips. Um, did I understand you correctly that the Wi-Fi Wave 2 um, term actually came from the AC chips? It's a term related to the 802.11ac standard, uh, which was rolled out into separate waves or stages with the second stage introducing support for features such as uh, multi-user MIMO and beamforming. And these were the first features that we implemented in this software package and it's why this name was chosen, chosen oh, so, for it. Uh, so the package is going to change? I bet the name will change. Well, the way the package is, the way the software is packaged may change. And if it does, probably the name will, will as well. But uh, the menu we've built, the configuration interface, that will stay the same. And as an, as an end user, uh, that's not something you you have to worry about. Our 802.11ax products, which require the package, come bundled uh, from from the factory with all the software needed, and, and there's no uh, effort on the user part required to manage that. So, um, moving on, there's a new configuration menu. Right. So can you walk us through what has changed uh, with uh, the configuration menu? There are a couple of improvements we've taken from the previous implementation of Capsman. One is that uh, configuration parameters are now grouped into categories. For example, everything related to the radio channel used is under the channel category. Well, that was the first thing I noticed when I tried the package. But then uh, soon after that, I realized that there's actually two ways of configuring um, the interfaces as you can configure them directly or you can create a profile. Um, and that could add uh, complexity, complexity to it. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Uh, that is another feature we brought over from uh, Capsman. You can bundle configuration param parameters into profiles and then apply those profiles to many different interfaces. Personally, I like it as a way of making it obvious to me at a glance which interfaces share a configuration. And you can then override some of those profile settings on certain interfaces. But uh, personally, I find that once you start adding overrides, this the, the whole configuration gets a bit more difficult to parse? Well, it's probably um, not as difficult to parse for a computer as it is for the human brain. Uh, so why don't we just get rid of uh, the override and configure everything to the profiles? The profiles are a powerful tool, but they're probably best suited for setups where you have a lot of interfaces, not so much for uh, just a, a standalone dual band AP with its two interfaces. In which case, it would just be needlessly complex 
make, make the configuration needlessly complex. Well, I suppose the key takeaway is that um, if you're only doing very basic configuration, it's best to just apply the configuration directly. But then once you need something more complex and you start using profiles, then just stick to the profiles so that you don't overcomplicate things for yourself. Uh, yeah, I would agree. To, I, I would agree with that. And uh, another improvement in the Wi-Fi Wave 2 package is that uh, there are better defaults, default values for parameters than in the previous uh, wireless pack package. Uh, like what? Like, for example, uh, an interface will default to the newest uh, supported band for the radio. And Th that, that's new? What was the... What previously, was the... Uh, a radio defaulted to the oldest supported band and, and like a, an interface defaulted to a, wire, uh, a station mode instead of AP, which was... Which it's it's not what most people want, but it had to be kept around for reasons of backwards compatibility. Makes sense. It it just keeps getting better and better every day, almost every day, and it keeps making more sense. But uh, are there any other improvements you would like to mention? There are improvements under the hood, so to speak, which will hopefully let us bring uh, bring to the users new uh, support for new hardware uh, faster than we've used to. And there was a pretty uh, big gap between the 802.11ax standard being uh, finalized and then um, introducing AX into our devices. I believe our first device was uh, HAP AX squared, uh, which came out like yesterday. We would certainly like to avoid such long delays in the future and uh, it's Doing that is a part of why the Wi-Fi Wave 2 package had to be different and separate from the legacy wireless package. Is the legacy uh, package now deprecated? Uh, will, they, will, will there be further development? It will continue receiving bug fixes and, and security fixes. I mean, we still sell products with it installed, so we have to support it. but. Uh, I wouldn't expect any major new features being implemented there. And uh, on this topic, we have some questions from users on the forum, on the Reddit. So this uh, Wi-Fi Way 2 package and uh, the capsman in this package, it won't be able to control legacy access points. No, um, unfortunately, it wasn't feasible to make them compatible. Yeah, well, but it is what it is. But if you're using, uh, if you're running local forwarding on your caps, uh, on the access points, there's not much keeping you from running both the legacy caps man and the Wi-Fi Wave 2 caps man simultaneously. Uh, just like with the legacy caps man, you don't have to have a separate controller. You can run, you can buy a single 802.11ax uh, access point and run the manager on that. Mm. So there is a solution. We should uh, make a video on this, right? Yeah, uh, Capsman is a very big uh, topic on its own, so um, I think we should uh, make another video just on Capsman. Sign me up. Let's do this. When I got my very first MicroStick device, I, I stumbled uh, on the Capsman by accident. Uh, I started with Capsman instead of, uh, of the Quick Start. So it was a, a very weird weekend for me. <laughs> so I will also be definitely watching this tutorial. So please make it. All right, will do. So while we're on the topic of new stuff, so the reasons to upgrade to the MicroStick AX Wi-Fi 6, uh, the newer devices, a lot of people are always obsessed about uh, pure speed. Is it faster? But I think we've reached the point where all sorts of devices are super fast already. So are there any other ben benefits you would mention? Like what is becoming better? Relating to the 802.11x standard in general, uh, the code name for the uh, technical standard describing it was HE standing for high efficiency. So. Uh, 802.11ax is uh, designed to be better, better 
in setups, in dense setups with very many client devices. But speaking of the Wi-Fi Wave 2 package uh, that we install on our 802.11ax access points, uh, it brings along a lot of uh, security improvements. So WPA3 uh, authentication uh, and uh, as a requirement, uh, uh, 802.11w management frame protection. Uh, as well as uh, improved roaming, uh, what's called 802.11r, fast roaming before between access points, as long as they're managed by the same instance of router OS. And uh, as well as, as as well as features that uh, are are could be described as uh, features that assist roaming, not just fast handshakes, fast handover of clients between access points, but uh, uh, management frames that inform client devices as to how to roam better. So information about other access points available in the network. Do you see any like type of environment where this would be the most significant? Like what type of setups, what type of uh... I don't know, like uh, productions and so on, like point out to me a, a group like in the society where uh, you could go and tell them, guys, you will benefit the most from upgrading. I, I would say that the bulk of the features are for installations where there are a lot of clients and setups where those clients move about. So not so much maybe uh, a home user, but uh, an, uh, a large office or a public venue, an, an arena, a stadium, and so on. But WPA3 is also just better. So there's something to be gained at home as well. Mm -hmm. So probably uh, dense urban environments, such as like apartment buildings with small flats. Mm -hmm. So you don't uh, uh, get all the interference and everything from your neighbors and uh, stuff you like get, that? You get interference, yes, but there are provisions in the standard for mitigating it. So uh, ways for an access point to determine that the interference will not be detrimental to them transmitting at the time. Mm. So you can ignore a part of the interference with the 802.11x standard. Because at this point we've lost all hope that individual apartment owners will configure their routers to not transmit all over the place. So instead we just had to improve uh, what the devices, how devices handle the this uh, absolute nonsense of data all over the place. But uh, you should think about configuring the radios as well. Discipline, we've mentioned discipline multiple times today. E easier when you have one administrator making a channel plan for an office uh, building, less so when it's a large building with multiple tenants each. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you, can you control your own uh, TX power like in the old uh, wireless package? You can, yeah. Yeah, so turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> turn it down. It's way too loud. <laughs> so I'll try to summarize everything for people like me. So if you have a HAP AC and you're wondering, oh, should I upgrade to HAP AX? It's not just about the speed. Forget about it. Speed is just one of the many, many dimensions of networking, which is important, and you're getting better speed with AX as well, but you're also getting more clients, you're getting better security and overall performance, just, just uh, like with no hiccups, everything works better, smoother. You get uninterrupted roaming, like in the past, if, if you would move around like a conference hall, for example, and uh, your device is switching to the closer, stronger access point, you would lose connection for a short bit, but it, it can be annoying and you can lose even some, I don't know, some, some data maybe in the process, especially if you're like uh, doing something online, like a call or maybe just, I don't know, uploading heavy files. 
uh, whatever you're getting uninterrupted roaming which is super super nice for just you know quality of life just living a, a better more peaceful life with less annoyances that is super important uh, underrated even and you're also getting lower latency which is uh, always nice to have uh, it, it, it is getting like sort of a buzzword nowadays, isn't it? Like everyone is so concerned about latency, but it also is getting better. So if it matters for a lot of people, it is important and you're getting that with the upgrade. So yeah, uh, did I get everything more or less correctly? Yeah, yeah. See guys, I am learning something in the process. So <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, such a blessing to be able to learn straight from the networking source. Well, let's, ne let's not make this uh, episode too long. There was a, a lot of information, a lot of uh, um, food for thoughts and uh, some promises for uh, upcoming videos. So guys, keep watching. Um, let us know in the comments what other topics we should cover. Uh, as you see in this informal session of the crossroads, we can have like uh, experts in specific fields just uh, talking about uh, what they're working on and uh, some some other topics that we usually don't cover in, in the other videos. So yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know, uh, let us know if you want to see more, um, more Toms, more Druvis, more of me and more on the wonderful world of Router OS. Bye.